going to show you some proof of Stephen Anderson actually teaching what the Bible says about the Godhead, that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Ghost are one being. They're not three persons, as the Trinitarians claim, but they're also not three modes or, or manifestations, as oneness modalist heretics claim. So let me show you that real quick. This is very interesting. Uh, Anderson, I mean, it shows that even a lost person can just see what the Bible says about the God. Obviously, a lost person can't understand the Bible. And, of course, Anderson will deny, oh, it just slipped up. I didn't actually teach that. Well, it doesn't deny the fact that he's still teaching what the Bible says. And it just shows that even a lost person can just read the Bible and see that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Ghost are one being. It's very interesting. Let's check this out. In this clip, he says that Jesus is the Holy Spirit, which he is. And I'm going to show you some proof of that from Scripture, too. Let's watch this. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ. I mean, nobody's going to sit here and tell me that the resurrected body of Jesus Christ is living inside of me. And yet the Bible says, no, you're not your own self, said that Jesus Christ is in you. In the form of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. So right there, he just said that Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. He's in you in the form of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what the Bible says. I mean, it shows even he can say it, and he's a lost person. Now, obviously, he's wrong because he, he, he denies this and now teaches a pagan trinity, which of this, this pagan three-god system. But let me show you some proof that what he said was right, actually. Matthew chapter 8, 28, verse 19. Go you there. This is a verse Trinitarians will run to to prove the pagan trinity. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now Trinitarians, they'll say that Jesus' only baptism is false, and they're right to an extent. Baptizing them in Jesus only, excluding the Father and Holy Ghost, is false. However, uh, compare Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, and here's a really good proof that they just destroy the whole trinity, in saying that Jesus, the Father, and Holy Ghost are not, are not one, and not, and are not the same. So compare Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, to Acts chapter 2, verse I think it's 38. Because they'll say that baptism in Jesus is false. Now, obviously, again, baptism in Jesus only without the Holy Spirit and the Father is false. But check out Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh, so they're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and not in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Hmm, what does this mean? Well, either one works, because the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are all in Jesus Christ. You know, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So that, that just destroys the Trinity. Because, it, because you hear in, in Matthew 18, or Matthew 20, I think it's 28, verse 19, they're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But in Acts 2, they're only baptized in the name of Jesus. How does that work? Because the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ. So either one of them works. Let me show you some more proof on that. And if you're a Trinitarian, how do you answer that? You can't. Matthew, or Acts chapter 19, verse 9. Because some people will say, well, Acts chapter 2 is written to Jews, which it is. But here's one that's not written to Jews. Acts 19, 5. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hmm. And you know, in verse 6, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And for those of you who don't know, speaking of tongues is not the, what the charismatic devils, what the demonic charismatics do. It's no languages, okay? But again, we see them baptized in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, why is it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Because the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ, Colossians 2, 9. So either one of them works. So Anderson's right, the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ in the sense that they are one being. Now here's some stuff of him saying that Jesus is God the Father. And I'm going to show you some proof of that as well. So let's get right into it. Even though he was God himself incarnate in the flesh, why is he known as the Son? Why did God choose to call him the Son and to call himself the Father? Why did he call himself that? And of course we know that Jesus Christ is also known as the Father many times throughout the Bible, like in Isaiah 9, 6 and elsewhere. He calls himself the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You know, I always point these people that, that, that balk at the deity of Christ. I'll show them the part where he said, I and my Father are one. And here's what they say. They say, oh, you know, that just means they're one in purpose. <laughs> they're just one in spirit. And it's funny, that's what the Trinitarians claim. They always say, oh, they're just one in purpose, one in spirit. So he's actually refuting the Trinity. But now, of course, he flip-flops later on and says, oh, the Trinity's biblical. And I, I just slipped up when I said that. You know, But he's teaching what the Bible says. Because the Trinitarians will have to explain those verses away by saying, oh, they're just one in purpose or whatever. You know, 
Uh, no, they are one being. And they said, you know, you and your wife are one. You know? Uh, the two shall be one flesh. You know, the two shall be made one. And I said, yeah, but would I ever say to you, if you've seen me, you've seen my wife. <laughs> would that make any sense? We're one in purpose. We're one in spirit. But if you have seen me, that doesn't mean you've seen my wife. Uh, you know, if somebody said, show us your wife. Show us your wife, Pastor. I said, well, don't you get it? If you've seen me, you've seen my wife. <laughs> no. It Amen. You know, the, the Bible says, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus Again, you know, there's um, verses where Jesus says he is the image of, you know, he's the express image of God. I'll, sh I'll show you some proof on that. Hebrews chapter 1, verse, uh, I think it's verse 2 to 3. Hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, and by whom was also made the worlds, or by whom also was he, also, sorry, by whom also he made the worlds. Not good at reading. Look at verse 3. Who being in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Jesus is the express image of God. Uh, Colossians chapter, I think it's Colossians chapter 4, verse number 4. Uh, and again, you know, think of Jesus being the image of God. That, that's why Jesus says, you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because he is the image of God. She, the Father is in him as the soul, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the, the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse, uh, verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. Look at verse 5, or I mean verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. Again, you know, look at verse 4 again, back back to verse 4, who is the image of God. You know, you've seen him, you've seen the Father. He is the image of God. Uh, Colossians, where's Colossians? Colossians chapter 1, I think it's verse 13 to 15. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us unto the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Look at verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. You've seen him, you've seen the Father. You know, I think it's in John chapter 12, Jesus says, You've seen him, you see you've seen the one who sent him. It's that simple. So Anderson's teaching the biblical Godhead here. And this next clip, again, he says Jesus is the Father. Obviously, the dislikes. Look at the dislikes right there. Trinitarians got mad. They don't like the fact that someone's exposing their false trinity. And so this is a great scripture to show that Jesus is God. And not only that, look at this. The everlasting Father. So is there some other different everlasting Father? And then Jesus isn't ever... No, there's the everlasting Father, and it's Jesus Christ. Well, so that's God the Father. Look, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Amen. I mean, again, this is what the Bible teaches. Isaiah 9, 6. Let me show you that. Isaiah 9, 6. Uh, where is it? Isaiah chapter 9. And of course, Anderson later on says, oh, it, the modalists the modalist twist that verse. Uh, because they can't explain the text. Sorry, just some stuff happened in the background. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child... This is a prophecy about Jesus. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given... And it knows how it's lowercase son. Because whenever you see capital S, son of God, you're talking about Jesus Christ. Uh, and the lowercase son talking about, you know, his physical earthly body. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, capital F. Whenever you see a capital F, it's talking about God the Father, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is called the Everlasting Father. You know, how do you get around that? Very Trinitarian. He is, I mean, and you'll say, well, you're denying he's the son of God. Uh, no, I don't. Jesus, Jesus is the son of God. I don't deny that. You know, Jesus is the son of God, but he is not God the son, and he is not, you know, the, the second person of the, of the Trinity. He is God. He is God. He is fully God within himself. Uh, 1 John chapter 5. Where is it? 1 John chapter 5. Verse number 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Jesus is the Son of God, but he's also God the Father. You know? And you say, well, how, how does that work? I don't know. You know, if you can explain God, you got a problem there, because 
you know, if your god is so puny and so 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 carnal, you can explain him with your with your with your carnal mind. You got you might you might want to get a different god. That's all I can say. Verse eleven, and this is the record that God gave unto us eternal life, and His life is in His Son. Uh, he that hath the Son, verse twelve, he that hath the Son of God hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So no, I do not deny that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Son of God, and He is also God the Father. And again, you say, how do you explain that? Uh, I don't. I can't explain God. You know, God is way more bigger than I can ever comprehend. So. Uh, yeah, Jesus, I don't, you know, verse 13, these things have written to you that you may believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know, you may know that you have eternal life, and that you, they, sorry, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So, to all you liars out there who say, oh, you deny that Jesus is the Son of God, uh, no, I don't. He's the Son of God, and he's also God. That's simple. So, yeah, Anderson is teaching the biblical Godhead. Now, he just flipped off over the Trinitarianism. But it's it's you know it shows how even just a basic reading of, of the Bible will show that that Jesus and the Father and the Holy Ghost are one being. You know, First John five seven, for there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Notice how it doesn't say these three persons are one; it just says these these three are one. They are one God, not three gods as the Trinitarians claim. Now some more verses of scripture I want to go to kind of just destroyed the whole, whole Trinitarian system. Isaiah chapter 40, um, 44, or no, 43 verse 11. Here's one that makes a big problem for the Trinitarians. 43 verse 11. Uh, Isaiah 43 11. Even I, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So beside him there's no Savior. So if God the Father and Jesus Christ are separate, and Jesus is the Savior and the Father is not, then you have then you have two saviors, and then there's a savior beside him. You know, God says he's the savior. There's no savior beside him. But according to Trinitarians, God the Father, I guess, is the savior, and the Holy Ghost is the savior. I mean, the Holy, I mean, sorry, the Holy Ghost, Jesus is the savior. So you have two saviors. Ridiculous. Isaiah chapter forty-five, verse six, that they may know from the rising of the sun and to the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Hmm. You know, hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Deut- Deuteronomy four six or six four, one God. There's no 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 one else beside Him. Uh, Isaiah chapter forty forty four verse six. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his and his Redeemer, the Lord of Hosts. I am the first and the last, and beside me there is no God. So we see here, and his Redeemer, the Lord of Hosts. We see a separation there. You know, and and and, for, and to all the Jews out there who reject Jesus Christ and say that the, the Son of God is not in the Old Testament, thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of Hosts. So again, Jesus is the Son of God. There is separation there, but they are one being. Because look at that. He says again, singular. I am. Because look, they're both speaking. I am the first and the last, and beside me there is no God. So they're both speaking, but they're saying I am the first and and the last. They're singular. They are one being. Although they're although they are both speaking in this verse. And you say, how do you explain that? Can't. You know, that's that's the mystery of godliness. And again, if you have a god that you can explain with your puny mind, you might want to get a different god. So, yeah, you're a Trinitarian. How do you answer that? Beside me, there is no god. And they're both speaking here, and they're and they're both saying singular. Beside me, there is no god. You can't answer that because the Trinity is a pagan doctrine. The Godhead is one being. Jesus, the Son of God. Son of God, God the Father and the Holy Ghost, they are one being. So don't be deceived by this Trinitarian nonsense. And it shows how even Anderson could see the biblical Godhead and not believe this pagan not, not obviously he believes the pagan Trinity Trinity now, you know, this Trinity in Scripture sermon right there. But, you know, there's hope for Trinitarian heretics, uh, people who believe this pagan Trinity. You you can I mean just read the Bible. Just just read the Bible. That simple. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.